In order to better understand our companion Boone, we must first fully understand the plight of the NCR. The NCR is the New California Republic, one of the few factions in Fallout New Vegas trying to restore order to the Mojave Wasteland and protect its civilians from Raiders and Caesar's Legion. With this video, we're going to better understand Caesar's Legion by exploring Camp Forlorn Hope and the NCR's operations nearby. Camp Forlorn Hope Hope is a desperate place. This camp is at the forefront of the NCR's defenses against Caesar's Legion. This is the place where NCR soldiers go to die. The camp is in complete disrepair. Scores of NCR soldiers have already died to legionary raids. We find tents all over the place, but they're all empty. The beds are no longer owned because the owners are dead. We find only a few rickety shacks and few supplies. The camp is running out of food, ammunition, and men. Camp Forlorn Hope rests on a hillside, protecting the wasteland from the legionaries who have taken a nearby town. Between the town and Camp Forlorn Hope is no man's land. This is an irradiated plane where the soldiers of the NCR and Caesar's Legion have met each other in combat and died. The combatants are at a stalemate. The Legion can't muster enough forces to fully break Forlorn's back, but the NCR numbers are dwindling and they can't last much longer. Beyond No Man's Land is the town of Nelson. This used to be a town of civilians living their everyday lives, protected by the NCR, until Caesar's Legion seized the town killed most of its inhabitants, and crucified the NCR soldiers protecting it. They did this to send the NCR a message. And from this camp, they have been sending out raiding parties to harass people of the wasteland and to kill NCR soldiers. The large tent at the bottom of the camp is the Camp Forlorn Hope Command Center. The camp is serviced by one medical tent, with one doctor who is having a hard time tending to all of his patients. Most of the men die, which is why right next to the camp is a huge graveyard filled with the remains of young men and women who died for their cause. Next to the command center is the armory, where the quarter Master keeps all of the camp's gear and supplies, but the armory is empty. There are no supplies. The safes are all empty. The lockers are bare. The town has completely ran out of resources and no new resources are coming. Empty tents dot the camp, where men once lived, but now these men are all dead. The few who remain can enjoy their meals in a rickety mess hall, right next to a storage shack containing the last of the camp's meager resources. The remaining men can fit in one tiny barracks, and in the far corner of the camp we find one jail. If the camp had the soldiers, this could be a well-fortified camp. There are guard posts guarding every corner of the camp. The only source of water this camp has is a tiny spring that comes from the small hillside behind the camp running down into the valley below. But this water is irradiated and not fit for human consumption. Upon entering the command center, we find Major Pilati in desperate need of help. I've got the Legion at Nelson breathing down my neck and not enough men or supplies to get this camp into fighting shape so we can strike back. I need someone to talk to a few of the officers and help them resolve some of the problems around here. If I can get this place in order, then I can focus our efforts on taking back Nelson from the Legion. And the more that gets done around here, the more resources I'll be able to put into assaulting Nelson. Our biggest problems right now are supplies and troops, and the Legion is draining us both. Quartermaster Mays has been complaining to me non-stop about the lack of supplies. But unfortunately, we aren't getting a resupply anytime soon. I want you to speak with him and see if there's anything you can do for him. Heading on over to the armory, we can talk with Quartermaster Mays. So, the Major has you running errands for him. Well, we're short on personnel as well as supplies, so we'll take all the help we can get. This has got to be one of the worst situations I've been in. Not too much I can do about it, but do my job and do it right. The Major let me send out some troops to gather supplies, but unfortunately they never returned. I'm guessing they ran into some trouble on the way. You can help by finding the troops and assisting them in bringing back any supplies they found. I sent them to Helios 1 to see if they had any supplies they could spare. They gotta be somewhere between here and there. I'd try searching the main road or checking with the men at Helios 1 to see if they know anything. Of course it's dangerous. Damn Legion raiding parties have been giving us hell ever since they took over Nelson. Hell, my men probably got ambushed by a raiding party. But we need those supplies and we need them badly. So Camp Forlorn Hope asked for help from another NCR installation, Helios 1. They hoped to retrieve supplies from Helios 1, but the men never returned. We can head to Helios 1 
to talk with Lieutenant Haggardly to find out where those men went. Yeah, they were here a while ago. Gave them all I could, which wasn't much. But as many problems as we're having here, I know they've got it worse. I've seen soldiers get assigned there. It's like they got told they were going to die. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. If you're trying to track them down, we put a GPS marker in the supply crate. You can track it with your Pip-Boy. Good luck. Heading off the beaten path, if we walk across the rocky field towards Camp Forlorn Hope, we find what remains of the soldiers who came for help. Their bodies lie on the ground, surrounded by crates that they likely got from Helios One. In one of the crates, we find the Camp Forlorn Hope supply shipment, the only shipment remaining. But as soon as we loot it, we get ambushed by legionaries. That's the last of the ammo. Retribution. These are likely the very assassins who killed the men we find on the ground. On one of the corpses, we find Forlorn Hope, Letter 1. To my dearest Ellen, we're in a tough spot here and none of the men expect to make it out alive. Things look pretty grim. I'm writing this so that if anything happens to me, you know how much you meant to me. I was foolish to join the NCR and leave you behind, and I've regretted it every second of every day that I've been here. My only wish now is to see you again and hold you in my arms. The only thing that keeps me from going are my thoughts of you. Just know that I made mistakes, but you were the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm sorry, and I love you, Harry. On the other corpse, we find letter eight to my brothers. If you're reading this, then I was probably killed by some slimy legion scum who got lucky. Hopefully the bastard is dead and six feet under, but if not, you better avenge me, or I will haunt you until the day you die, Quincy. P.S. Kill all the Legion dogs that I wasn't able to. The tragic stories of these individual soldiers are littered around Camp Forlorn Hope. We find more of their letters and personal footlockers and duffel bags scattered around the camp. Dear Mom and Dad, if you're reading this, you know I won't be coming home. I'm sorry how this all ended. I'm sorry for all the times that I didn't listen to you. I'm sorry for storming out the way I did. But I want you to know that you were the best parents anyone could ever have. You gave me everything I could have ever wanted, and I only now see that. Thank you for everything, your son James. Audrey, things have gotten pretty grim since my last letter. The conditions here at Forlorn Hope just keep getting worse and worse. Food is scarce, medicine and supplies are limited, and we're all scared out of our minds. We lose a handful of good men every day. It's hard seeing all of your friends die. The Major does his best to inspire hope and confidence, but it's just not working anymore. Too many people have died here. Dr. Richards is a good man, if a little odd, but there's just too many wounded for him to handle. Through all the strife, I take solace in the fact that I'm fighting to keep our family safe. And when the NCR wins this fight, it'll make the world a better place for us all. Take care of the kids, and I'll write you again soon. Ted. Dear Janie, if you're reading this... That means I didn't make it. I want you to know that you were the most important thing in my world. You were my sun, my moon, my stars. Even out here on the battlefield, I thought of you every minute of every day. At night, I put your picture on the bunk above me and looked into your beautiful eyes until I fell asleep. Even though I'm gone, know that I'll always be with you. Just close your eyes and think of me and I'll be there, right by your side. Daniel. Dear sister... They're sending me into the no man's land tomorrow, and by the time you read this, I'll be dead. That means that once again, you were right and I was wrong. Ever since we were kids, I was always the thorn in your side, always doing everything you told me not to. Now, as I'm about to go off to my death, I realize you were only looking out for me all these years. I'm so sorry. I can only hope that you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Kevin. To my darling Gracie, Know that I died fighting for what I believed in. I know you never understood why I had to do this, but I'm thankful that you supported me anyway. I appreciated every letter that you sent. They gave me hope when we had none out here. You were always the one thing keeping me going, and I thank you for that. I wish that this could have turned out differently, but know that I loved you with all of my heart. Jeff. Dear Ma and Pa, if you're getting this letter, then I'm sure you've already heard the news. I'm sorry, but know that I'm in a better place. Tell Mikey I did good, okay? You were the best family ever, and I hope I've made you all proud. Will. 
Back at the armory, we can check in with Quartermaster Mays to let him know that we found the missing men. I take it my men were dead. It's a high price to pay, but these supplies will save a few lives here. Major Pilati now wants us to help the doctor try and save some of his injured men. The extra supplies will help for a short time, but that only solves one of our problems. With all the Legion raids lately, we're running low on troops that can still fight. Some are injured, but even more are dead. I want you to check in with Dr. Richards and see if he needs any help getting our troops back on the front line. Inside the medical tent, we find a man splattered with blood, smoking a cigarette trying to cope. If I was a mortician, business would be booming. As a doctor, business is hard. Too many injuries that I can't do anything about. I've had enough fighting and fixing up soldiers just to send them right back out to die to last a lifetime. This man is a veteran. He fought in the Battle of Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam was at the center of a battle between the NCR and Caesar's Legion four years ago. The NCR won and pushed the Legion off, but they suffered great losses. The Legion attacked in full force. Chief Hanlon had the troopers fall back, pulling the enemy in before entrenching into secure positions. The Legion got bogged down and Rangers and First Recon sharpshooters started taking out the Legion officers. They sent their best men to stop the Rangers and First Recon, but the Rangers pulled them into a trap at Boulder City and blew them all to hell. After that, the Legion's forces were in disarray and tried to retreat. However, our forces advanced rapidly and routed them, and that was that. It was a fierce battle. Lots of people died. Anyone with medical training had their hands full for weeks after the battle was finally over. During that time, I saw quite a few things I wouldn't mind forgetting about. Even if you don't have very good medicine, you can offer to help. With business booming like it is, and considering I'm the only person with medical experience in the camp, I could perhaps use a hand. As you can see, we have a lot of injured troopers here, and I haven't had time to look at all of them yet. Since you have some medical experience, I'd like you to examine them and see what you can do to treat them. The medical tent is strewn with bodies and beds. You can diagnose each injured trooper, and if you have high levels of medicine, you can cure them right then and there. But if you don't, you find the supplies you need to heal these men scattered around the tent. This man needs a medical brace, medex, and a bone saw. You can loot all of them and then come back and amputate his limbs. You discover that the man's hand was gangrenous, and you had to amputate it as well. He's gonna live, but now he's completely maimed, breathing but unable to fight again. You can cure the next man with tweezers, medex, and a super stim pack. You need to supply the medex and the stim pack, but you can find the tweezers lying on a table. You manage to pick out all of the shrapnel, and then you use a super stim pack to rescue him from circulatory shock. Thanks to your efforts, he'll make a complete recovery. The final man has multiple machete wounds. With medex, whiskey, and surgical tubing, which you can find lying about, you can treat him. The whiskey sterilizes the wound, and the man will make a complete recovery. Excellent job. Where'd you learn to do all that? I don't think I could have done much better myself. Very impressive. As for the men, they'll recover soon and be back on the front lines in no time. Huh. <sighs> the circle of life. But Dr. Richards is still not done with you. He has a problem with theft. If fighting the Legion wasn't enough, now he has to worry about betrayal from within his own ranks. I'm doing the best I can considering the poor situation I find myself in. There's barely enough equipment or medicine to handle the number of injuries we have. To make things worse, I think someone might be stealing my supplies. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go searching for the missing supplies since I have my hands full with injured soldiers. I store a variety of drugs here, but it looks like my supply of Hydra is diminishing rather quickly. The camp is pretty dead at night, especially at 0200 hours when the guard shift changes. That'd be a good place to start looking. You might want to ask around, and keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Asking around the camp, we meet some interesting people, but the only one that raises our suspicion is a man named Private Stone. He's standing against the barracks, lazing about, not doing much, and he's bitter. Today, tomorrow, it doesn't matter. We're all going to die in this war. So why don't you just leave me alone? Missing medical supplies? No, uh, I don't know anything about that. His response seemed shifty, but my medicine isn't enough to get a clear answer out of him, so instead, we go into the tent and we wait until two in the morning. At that time, we find Private Stone crouched, sneaking around inside the tent. He goes to a cabinet and steals some Hydra. We can confront him here and there. Uh, I was just, uh, getting some fresh air and stretching my legs. It's getting pretty late, though. I should get going. Good night. Now that we have caught the thief, we can go back to Dr. Richards and report him. I'll have to talk to Major Pilatli about this right away. And afterwards, we find him in the jail, a suitable place for such a traitor. 
But the greatest problem that Camp Forlorn Hope is dealing with right now is one of communication. They seem to be getting crossed lines. The ranger outposts are reporting inconsistencies. Tech Sergeant Rays fills you in on the details. I handle communications for Camp Forlorn Hope, compiling reports I've received from the rangers at Camp Golf as well as the brass at McCarran. I have the delightful task of tabulating stockpiles, kill ratios, mission success rates, radiation deaths, and other truly fascinating numbers. I've come across numerous inconsistencies between our numbers and our reports, especially with regards to intercepting hostiles. Less than a third of reported enemy sightings are getting intercepted. Either our intel is faulty, or our enemies are one step ahead of us. I'm wondering if our radio security codes have been compromised. I need someone to deliver security code upgrades to each of the ranger stations. Before we head off to every ranger outpost, let's head over to Camp Golf. Camp Golf used to be a pre-war resort, but the NCR has taken it over as a base of operations for their communications. The camp is led by Chief Hanlon, a veteran of the NCR who led the Rangers at the Battle of Hoover Dam four years ago. He's responsible for collecting all of the communications that come in from all of the Ranger outposts and then delivering accurate intel to make sure that they're one step ahead of Caesar's Legion. Folks around here call me the Chief, but Hanlon's just fine. Intel needs to be coordinated through golf so we can verify and advise appropriately. I don't know technical Sergeant Reyes, but coordinating intel can be messy sometimes. Things get mixed up, people get confused. Heck, I get confused and I've been doing this for a long time now. What he or she sees as a problem might be standard operating procedure. That's not to say Reyes is wrong for being concerned, but it's easy for the sand to get in your eyes out here. The logical thing to do is to check with the patrol rangers and comm officers. Don't be too discouraged if some things don't match up. Different people see different things, and sometimes the meaning gets twisted, lost in static from person to person. Hanlon is also a great source of information about Caesar's Legion. Being a veteran, he knows his enemy well. Chief Hanlon has a staggering 20 minutes of pure dialogue, which I'm not going to play for you here, but it's important to understand the Legion before we fight them. Where did they come from? How did it get this bad? The story starts with the followers of the Apocalypse. This is a group of men and women who are mostly pacifists, who were so horrified with the nuclear war that they wanted to prevent the Apocalypse from ever happening again. To do so, they wanted to read, understand, and retain all of humanity's pre-war knowledge, hoping that this knowledge would help them prevent a future disaster. The followers of the Apocalypse are a useful faction because instead of just proselytizing, they actually go around the wasteland healing people, giving them access to doctors when they did not have access before, teaching people agriculture. Because of their wealth of knowledge, they served as technical advisors, researchers, and educators to the NCR when the NCR moved into the region. However, as the NCR's influence grew, the followers of the Apocalypse didn't like how the NCR was becoming a bit more patriotic. They didn't like how the NCR was beginning to expand. One of the follower scribes was a man named Edward Sallow. He was sent by the followers of the Apocalypse to the Grand Canyon to minister to the Blackfoot tribe that lived there. Along with him went a missionary named Joshua Graham to serve as his translator to the Blackfoot. However, when he got to the Grand Canyon, the Blackfoot tribe kidnapped him. However, they didn't kill him because Sallow convinced them that he was worth saving. He started to teach them technology. Technology. He started to teach them military tactics, and soon he became indispensable to the success of the Blackfoot tribe. Eventually, the Blackfoot made Edward Sallow their leader. Edward Sallow had learned all about ancient Rome during his time as a follower of the Apocalypse. He decided to reinvent the Blackfoot tribe as the Roman Legion Reborn. He was impressed by Rome's legacy of brutality, convinced that it was the only thing to unite the scattered tribes of the Mojave. So he appointed himself Caesar. He made Joshua Graham his translator, his legate, his second in command. And then they went through the Mojave, absorbing tribe after tribe after tribe into their members. Whenever they absorbed a new tribe, they decimated that tribe's cultural identity. 
They made every tribe speak the language of the Legion, dress the way the Legion dressed, and worship Caesar as a god. In this way, he destroyed each tribe's cultural identity, but he successfully merged them into a unified, cohesive military force. Caesar made his legate, Joshua Graham, his primary military leader. Graham was a cruel and brutal man. Hanlon says that he did the sorts of things that would make you sick to talk about. The only force able to stand against them was the NCR. And so the two forces clashed at the Hoover Dam, both wanting it for its ability to produce energy. Joshua Graham arrayed his legionary army in three waves. The veterans or the officers of the army were in the back and the recruits were at the front. His strategy was to force the NCR to fight through wave after wave of the less skillful and more disposable soldiers until the NCR military was exhausted and then the veterans would attack. However, the NCR rangers saved the day. While the recruits were attacking the NCR front, the rangers began to pick off the veteran officers from the hillsides. When Joshua Graham discovered this, he ordered the veterans to charge forward through his own ranks and chase down the rangers. This uncharacteristic move confused the rest of his own forces, causing the other two waves to scatter in disarray. The rangers did a tactical retreat to the city of Boulder. The legion was on their tails coming towards the city, but before they left, Left, they hid mountains of C4 around the town. We'd packed the old city with C4 and dynamite. Crude, but it did the job. Those who didn't die in the blast were in no position to mount a defense. The ones left on the dam didn't know what to do. The troopers routed them. Graham pulled the remaining legionaries back, but the battle was over. He went south, back to the Grand Canyon, back to Caesar. And that was last we saw or heard from Joshua Graham. Losing the dam was the worst defeat the Legion ever suffered. Graham had been with Caesar since the beginning, but he had to set an example. The Praetorians covered Graham in pitch, lit him on fire, and down into the Grand Canyon he went. However, rumor has it that even after being burned alive, he survived, and somewhere he exists, known only as the Burned Man. But this battle was four years ago, and since then Caesar's Legion has begun to rearm itself. They've absorbed more tribes and grown stronger, and now they harass the NCR constantly, causing great damage. But let's see how the rangers at the ranger stations across the wasteland are faring against Caesar's Legion. The first one we visit is Ranger Station Delta. There we find Comm Officer Schieffer, who justly brags about the strength of the rangers. Well, when there's trouble regular NCR troops can't handle, they send in a ranger. Problem solved. We're also responsible for keeping the borders of the NCR secure, scouting out threats, that sort of thing. Remember, our job is to give her the new radio codes and frequencies because we suspect that somehow Caesar's Legion is intercepting the NCR's radio communications. Very well. You can tell Reyes that this station is secure. Next, we head to Ranger Station Echo. There we meet Comm Officer Green, who tells us more about Caesar's Legion's evil practice of kidnapping and slavery. We're keeping an eye on the Legion activities south of here at Cottonwood Cove. Nothing going on down there at the moment, just the usual slave trafficking. Poor bastards. We can ask him why he hasn't done anything about it. Believe me, I would love orders to take Cottonwood Cove apart and kick the Legion back across the river. But the brass at McCarran doesn't want us to waste resources on something they consider a minor target. So we just get to watch. Ranger Camp Echo is right next to Cottonwood Cove. This is one of the main ways the Legion infiltrates the territory protected by the NCR. Ranger Erasmus, one of the leaders at this outpost, complains that his post is constantly harassed by the Legion. The Legion's been sending raiding parties across the river in larger numbers lately. We don't have the men at this post to intercept them all. Next, we go to Ranger Station Charlie, where we find Comm Officer Stepanak. He tells us more of what it takes to become a Ranger, which helps us appreciate the Rangers even more. Ranger Station Charlie, we're responsible for keeping the highway up through Novak civilized. We're part scout, part commando, part sheriff. The training is brutal, and I'd say 8 out of 10 recruits washes out before the end. Before you get your Ranger badge, you've got to prove you can be quieter than a shadow, and more ferocious than a deathclaw. The Rangers mostly draw from the basic NCR army. A trooper who shows exceptional skill at fighting and scouting can be nominated for the training. 
Now after we leave Station Charlie, we can head over to the small town of Novak to rest and make some more ammunition. There we meet Ranger Andy. He used to be a ranger in the NCR until he was wounded, forcing him to retire. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet, and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. The Legion uses sick children, forcing them to work as suicide bombers, child slavery, crucifixion. What won't Caesar's Legion do? Now, Ranger Andy is still a force to be reckoned with. If you flatter the man, he teaches you a unique combat move. You know, maybe there's something I can do for you. Since you've gone to all the trouble of flattering a crippled old soldier, there's a move we have in the Rangers for knocking an opponent off his feet. Save my butt a bunch of times, maybe it will for you too. Let me show you how it's done. However, before you leave, he tells you that he hasn't been able to get Ranger Station Charlie on the radio. Hey, uh, wait a sec. I know what I said, but if you find yourself by Ranger Station Charlie, let me know what you find. I'd be interested. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. But we just left there. What could have happened? Heading back, we find the ranger station deserted. But upon entering the office, we find the corpses of the men we had just talked to lying on the ground. The Legion even booby-trapped the bodies with landmines. On one of the filing cabinets, we find a message from the Legion. This is a message to the NCR from the Legion. We are coming for you. Run and we will catch you. Hide, and we will find you. No matter what you do, you are all going to die. We took one of the women alive. And lying on the ground, we can hear a recording of these NCR soldiers' final moments. Drove the raiders off. No casualties. In the meantime, patrol's back. They're late. I hope they got a good excuse. What took... Heading back to Ranger Andy, we can tell him the bad news. Those were good men at that station. Good men. This whole town was sleeping a lot easier because of them. Now, who knows what we're in for? The Legion? Christ. We'd be better off with raiders. If the Legion was able to take out this Ranger camp, it's only a matter of time before they take out the others. Heading to Ranger Station Alpha, we can talk with Ranger Lineholm to hear her brag even more about the Rangers. Did you know that the first battle at Hoover Dam was won because of the Rangers? Legion had the numbers, but we had the skill. These men and women are indeed proud to be Rangers of the NCR. Let's hope that this pride is enough to withstand the brutality of the Legion. Comm Officer Castillo lets us know what the Legion has been up to in this area. Legion scouts try to slip across the river a couple of times a week, but they always end up floating downriver with holes in their heads. Sounds like this ranger outpost, at least, is still able to keep the Legion at bay. Next is Ranger Station Bravo. This station is on the far reaches of the Mojave Wasteland, the extremes of NCR territory. Here we learn from Ranger Erickson that the goal of this outpost is to keep the Legion from attacking from Lake Mead. We're here to make sure the Legion doesn't try to sneak around Lake Mead and come at NCR from another direction. But here we learn from Com Officer Tilden that he's been getting a lot of unwanted deliveries. Hey, do me a favor when you get back to race and tell her that we don't need any more damn ammo. Wouldn't mind more water, though. We keep getting deliveries of ammunition for some reason. I don't mind target practice, but there isn't all that much to shoot at out here. If he doesn't want these ammunition shipments, why doesn't he just let Camp Golf know that he doesn't want them? You think I haven't tried? Every time I do, Camp Golf acknowledges the situation. And soon after that, more ammo. Sounds like there really is something to this communication problem after all. And finally, we can go to Ranger Station Foxtrot. This is where the NCR keeps tabs on the Great Cons. Keeping watch on the Great Cons, mostly. They usually stick around Red Rock Canyon, but at least one large group left recently. We called it in, but haven't heard anything about any Great Con incidents. Whatever they're doing, they're keeping a low profile. 
Here we find Com Officer Lentk, whose confidence has been completely shattered after surviving an ambush by the Legion. We were on patrol near the dam when a Legion raiding party jumped us. Didn't even have time to radio it in. I was hit in the head with a machete and knocked out. Didn't kill me, though some nights I wish it had. When I woke up, my nerve was gone. The rest of my squad was crucified, butchered, mutilated. I don't know how they missed me. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they knew they'd broken me. I gambled and drank a lot after that. Got into trouble. But the Rangers gave me a second chance instead of kicking me out. So here I am. As much as Kudlow wants to keep Lenk as an officer, her poor performance is starting to frustrate the other Rangers. Yeah, it's a damn shame. There was a lot of talk about expelling her from the Rangers, especially once the gambling and drinking started. Being posted here is her second and last chance, and so far, I'm not impressed. Link's jumpy all the time, and the others are sick of it. Now that we've delivered the new radio signals and frequencies, we can head back to Tech Sergeant Ray's to check in. We've received some disturbing reports from some of the Ranger stations. Heavy casualties at Alpha, super mutant legionaries at Delta. The weirdest one has to be the Great Khans and their trained death claws at Foxtrot. These reports can't be accurate, can they? I know you've already been out there, but could you do me a solid and confirm these reports with the Rangers who sent them in? Super mutant legionaries? Trained death claws? We again go back to each ranger station and learn that these reports are completely false. You must be mistaken. I haven't filed any report like that. Trained death claws? I would have remembered that. High casualties? We've had one broken ankle, but nobody at this post has died. Any injury, illness, or death gets radioed to Ranger HQ at Camp Golf. Chief Hanlon and his aides compile the reports and assign reinforcements as needed. And they're not needed here. That patrol was wiped out by its own incompetence. A couple of the troopers were fooling around with a grenade when it went off. Back at Sergeant Rise, we have only one conclusion. All evidence points to Chief Hanlon back at Camp Golf. I knew it. Every one of the false reports was signed off by Chief Hanlon at Camp Golf. But why would the Chief manipulate the reports? I need you to take everything we found to Chief Hanlon and confront him with it. I don't want to make this public unless we have to. We can head back to confront him. Hold on. If we're going to have this conversation, let's go somewhere more private. Don't worry, not much bite left in this old dog. Hmm, he doesn't want to talk out on the balcony. He leads us inside and down to his main office, where we can continue the conversation discreetly. Creating fear and instability among the troopers without causing harm... It's the only thing I could think of to shake things up. It took some people getting killed to realize I'd gone too far. I had to stop. He admits that he has been falsifying intel in an effort to cause chaos and disarray within the NCR. But why? What are his motives? It's never gonna end. This fight with Caesar. People back home don't know what these young men and women are in for. The Legion is the worst enemy we've ever faced. But we can't stop Caesar here. Not without getting a lot of good people killed. Conscription brings in fresh troops to die here every month, like it's routine. And even if we hold this dam, what then? Are we going to send the NCR's men and women to die here for another five years? Ten? Patrol the whole length of the Colorado for hundreds of miles? Holding this dam, it'll be the death of us. After all these years, Chief Hanlon has lost hope. He fought through the Battle of Hoover Dam, but only four short years later, the Legion is back in force and just as dangerous as ever. His solution is to disrupt the NCR, hoping that that'll somehow lead to fewer NCR trooper deaths? That he'll save lives? What a fool's errand! How could he possibly think that would help? Rangers are volunteers. Every man and woman who signs up is willing to die for the NCR, myself included. A lot of this is my fault. It's only right that I stand with them. 
On one hand, of course, it's noble to have compassion towards the NCR soldiers and their families, and it's horrible to see all these young men die at the hands of the Legion. But he should know better than anyone what happens when the Legion takes over. Yes, the NCR has its problems. Yes, the leadership is possibly corrupt. But when you have a choice between a corrupt and incompetent good guy and no good guy, you take the incompetent one over nothing. I was a young man once. I know what it's like to want to fight for your home. But this isn't it. I read somewhere online that it is possible to convince Chief Hanlon to stop what he's doing if you can convince Chief Hanlon that Caesar's Legion is about to crumble. However, I didn't have that option in my game, which left me with two choices. The first option is to agree with him, to think that what he's doing is actually for the greater good, and to refuse to turn him in. I don't know if you're working for Caesar, or if desperation's made me a heck of a lot more persuasive. Either way, this is the right thing to do. Now, I trust we're done discussing this. I'm going to step through that door and pretend like we never had this talk. If you do, you leave quietly and that's that. The second option is to hold your ground and to say that he must be held to account. Men have died because of his faulty reporting, and the Legion has claimed new territory because of it. This has to stop. Fair enough. You want to do this the right way, go get one of the Rangers. Don't worry, I'm not going to run out on you. We head outside to get a ranger to take Chief Hanlon into custody. But as we turn around, we see that Hanlon has locked the door behind him. And then... That shot came from the chief's office. An NCR ranger bursts into the room and we find Chief Haldren's body lying on the floor. Chief, why did you do it? He committed suicide. He left behind a confession holotape. Rangers, this is the chief. I know I can ramble on sometimes, but I need you to listen close for the next minute or so. I've got some bad news. I messed up. Made a mistake. I thought I could help us get out of here, but it didn't work out. Rangers get injured all the time. It's part of the job. But if you lose a few fingers and get a bad break, that's it. You step down. We rely on each other too much to let our infirmities become a liability. The ranger knows when it's time. Only I didn't. Somewhere along the way, something broke inside me. I couldn't find a way out of this desert. I wrestled with it, and it took me down a dark road. I wish I could explain it to you. The old chief finally had a loss for words. Send me all the legion you can. I'll be waiting for him. This man was a decorated war hero. He led the rangers to victory in the Battle of Hoover Dam, and this is how he ends? What a tragedy. How will the rangers succeed with him gone? On the ground next to his corpse is the unique revolver Ranger Sequoia. Even though the man is dead, it's still set to owned. It's a powerful weapon, but you have to steal it to get it. You may need to come back when the Rangers aren't looking to take it. Back at Camp Forlorn Hope, we can give the sad news to Tech Sergeant Rays. What? Chief Hanlon? The man's a war hero. Why would he... That just doesn't make sense. This is awful. And it is awful. Everything Hanlon did between the success of Hoover Dam and now was to make the NCR weaker. And he did it again by killing himself. But at least we've had success elsewhere in the camp. We retrieved the supplies, we healed the sick, and now Major Pilati feels confident enough to strike out against Nelson. With the help you've given us, we're doing a little bit better, but we still have the Legion forces at Nelson to deal with. If we can retake Nelson, that will be a huge help to our efforts in this area and give us an advantage at Hoover Dam. Reports have the Legion forces at Nelson sizable, but not insurmountable. If the NCR can take back Nelson, it not only restores a town back to its rightful owners, giving Wastelanders another safe place to live, but it sends a powerful message to the Legion. We will save the battle for Nelson for a video on another day. Come back when you're ready. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full and sad story of Camp Forlorn Hope. We find a lot of hopelessness like this in the Mojave Wasteland, and the courier can be either an agent of hopelessness or an agent that restores hope to Camp Forlorn Hope. 
In our next episode, we will take the fight to the Legion at Nelson and send Caesar a strong message. But what are your thoughts on Camp Forlorn Hope, ladies and gentlemen? Do you think the cause of the NCR is worth fighting for? All of these young men and women whose lives were snuffed out in the flower of youth, these parents bereft of their children, wives and girlfriends who have lost their husbands, children now to be raised without a father. Is it worth it? Or do you think that the NCR is a lost cause, that the Legion can't be fought, and that the wisest course of action is just to roll over? and take it. Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of the comments you leave on my videos and I use them as inspiration for future videos. As with Fallout 4, I'm going to be going through Fallout New Vegas meticulously in investigating every aspect of its interesting and poignant story with a fine-toothed comb. If you want to make sure that you don't miss my next episode on New Vegas lore, be sure to subscribe and to click that notification bell button. And I've got a t-shirt shop, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, if you'd like to check out some of the wares that I have for sale, complete with Oxhorn and Fallout 4 themed images, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, I realize that I wouldn't be here without an audience. You are what make this channel possible. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video. Thank you.